Okay, so now we're going to discuss division of fractions, one of the more difficult concepts in all of elementary school mathematics. Um, as we have discussed with pretty much all of our arithmetic operations with both whole numbers and fractions, we don't want to just tell our students a procedure. We want to give them a convincing argument that the, uh, for why the correct piece of procedure is correct. And that is very evident with division of fractions because oftentimes division of fractions is simply taught by the so-called invert and multiply rule. But even that name is misleading. For example, if you knew nothing else about fractions and you were simply told invert and multiply to solve the problem, and you were asked to apply a so-called invert and multiply technique to two-thirds divided by three-fifths, the way I would interpret that is to invert and then multiply. So if I were told invert and multiply, the way I would interpret two-thirds divided by three-fifths is to invert two-thirds as three-halves and then multiply that by three-fifths. And then I would use my rule for multiplying by fractions to multiply straight across the top and the bottom to, to obtain nine tenths as an answer. Now, we know that that is the incorrect answer. So if we just, so, any, not even. So if we just rely on phrases like invert and multiply to teach something as complicated as division of fractions, we can see how easily that uh, kids can misunderstand the topic, okay? So what we do instead, just like we, what we've done for every other operation, is we want to give convincing arguments for why so-called multiplying by the reciprocal is the correct way to divide fractions. And what we want to do is we want to look at all types of problems that could involve division of fractions. So frankly, if we have a whole number divided by a whole number, that can result in a fraction as an answer. So we're going to start with the case where we have a whole number divided by a whole number, okay? In each of these cases, we are going to take a look at a particular problem that is characteristic of a general type of problem. So for example, if we want to illustrate whole number divided by whole number, we might pick the division problem five divided by two. Now what we want to do in this case is come up with a word problem that models five divided by two. And through the solution of this problem, we want to illustrate that five divided by two is equivalent to five times one half. Remember, in this discussion, we are not interested in getting the answers to these problems. What we want to show our students is that the way that we divide five by two is by multiplying five by one half, right? We want to illustrate that the multiply by the reciprocal method is a valid method in each of these cases, okay? So we might start with coming up with, or we might start by coming up with a uh, word problem that clearly represents partitive division for five divided by two. So for example, uh, you and I wish to share five cookies equally. How many cookies will each of us receive? Okay, so again, students at this point have enough experience with division to recognize that this problem is solved with the arithmetic five divided by two. Again, there are five things. You're gonna split them equally two ways. That's a division problem five divided by two. And now what we wanna do is we just wanna illustrate that in the solution of this problem, we see that the solution is found by taking five times one half, or multiplying five by one half. One way to do that is simply to split all these cookies in half. So with all these cookies, let's just cut them in half like so. And let's say you take all the top halves and I take all the bottom halves. Now the answer to this problem is how many cookies each of us receive. And by doing this, it's quite clear that each of us receive five halves of cookies, right? Uh, if I get all the top halves, I get a half, 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 I get five halves of cookies. So it's clear that the answer to this question and at the beginning, we knew that the question was solved by five divided by two, because it represented partitive division for five divided by two. But simply by splitting all these cookies in half, it's clear that the answer to this question is found by multiplying five times one half. That's what we want to get across here. I mean, yes, it's nice to know that the answer to this question is five halves or two and a half, but what's more important is that students are convinced that a way to solve division problems of whole numbers like this is to multiply by the reciprocal. So for example, in this case, five divided by two is equivalent to five times one half. Okay. Now, this isn't enough, unfortunately, because there are different types of fraction division problems that are gonna come up. So this, frankly, doesn't even look like a fraction division problem. It's a whole number divided by a whole number problem that ends up having a fraction as an answer. 
what about situations in which either our dividend divisor or both are themselves are fractions? So we need to handle those cases as well. And we want to handle them much the same way we handle this case. We want to start with a general situation. So maybe our next situation that we look at will be a fraction divided by a whole number. And then we can proceed in much the same way we did before. We can come up with a particular example of a fraction divided by a whole number. So maybe our example is 2 thirds divided by 4. And now we, of course, as uh, teachers, we know what the answer, we know what we want to get across. What we want to get across here is not necessarily finding the answer. What we want to get across is that 2 thirds divided by 4 is equivalent to 2 thirds times 1 fourth. So that's our goal here is to show that 2 thirds divided by 4 equals 2 thirds times 1 fourth. Because again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to uh, convince students that multiplying by the reciprocal is the correct way to divide fractions. So the first thing we do is we come up with a word problem that it clearly represents 2 thirds divided by 4. We could use a, a similar problem to the last one. In the last problem, we had five things we wanted to share among two people. In this problem, we might have two-thirds of something, maybe two-thirds of a pizza, that we want to share among four people. So maybe that's our problem. Four people wish to share two-thirds of a pizza. If each person receives the same amount, How much of a pizza does each person receive? So again, students have enough experience with partitive division to recognize that just in reading this problem, since we have two thirds of something that we're splitting equally four ways, that the correct arithmetic needed to solve this problem is two thirds divided by four. And just like in the last problem, what we want to do is through the solution of this problem, we want to illustrate that the correct arithmetic needed to solve this problem, or this problem can be solved by multiplying two-thirds times one-fourth. Okay. Running out of room here, so I'll draw the picture on the other board. Okay, so if we have two-thirds of a pizza, that might look something like this. So let's say the shaded part is gone. That's been eaten already. Okay? So we have two thirds of a pizza that we want to split equally among four people. Okay? So one way of thinking of this is there's two really big pieces of pizza and we want to split this four ways. Now one way to physically just imagine sitting at your kitchen table with a pizza cutter in your hand and four people around the table. What you're going to do, of course, is you're going to cut both of these remaining pieces in half to obtain four pieces. And that way, each person can take one piece. So if we do that, and keep in mind, since we're dealing with fractions here, we want all of the parts of the whole to be exactly the same size. So I'm going to cut the missing piece in half as well. So if we do that, it's clear that each person now receives one-fourth of the two-thirds of the pizza that we started with, right? Because now there are four pieces of pizza, right? So each person is going to receive one piece of pizza. But in terms of fractions, what does one piece of pizza represent? One piece of pizza represents one-fourth of the two-thirds of the pizza was there originally, okay? So each person receives, oops, receives. Mathematically, or arithmetically, each person receives one-fourth of two-thirds of the pizza. But now, we just have to recall our the way we interpreted a multi uh, multiplication of fractions. The word of was used to represent multiplication. So one-fourth of two-thirds corresponds to <clears throat> 
This means one fourth times two thirds. And of course, since the commutative property of multiplication certainly extends to fractions, one fourth times two thirds is equivalent to two thirds times one fourth. Okay. So what we've illustrated just from having a pizza cutter in our hand essentially is that if we had two thirds of a pizza that we started with and we want to split it four ways, then each person is going to get one fourth of the two thirds of a pizza that we started with. One fourth of two thirds corresponds to the arithmetic one fourth times two thirds. From the commutative property, we see that one fourth times two thirds is two thirds times one fourth. Okay, so if we put it all together, on the surface, the original problem we knew was two thirds divided by four because we had two thirds of something that we're dividing equally four ways. So on the one hand, the problem was stated two thirds divided by four. But on the other hand, through our solution process, which just entailed simply cutting these pieces in half, we see that the arithmetic that can solve the problem for us is two thirds times one fourth. Okay? So again, this is, a, this is more evidence, and that's really what we're going after here, is more evidence that makes it convincing that the correct way to divide fractions is to multiply by the reciprocal. So in the first stage, we had a whole number divided by a whole number problem, and the solution of that problem indicated that the correct way to divide was by multiplying by the reciprocal. Here, we had a fraction divided by a whole number, and the same thing came out. It turned out that multiplying by the reciprocal gave us the right answer, okay? So what we're doing is we're accumulating evidence. In more and more cases, it is apparent that this is the way we're gonna divide fractions, okay? Now, some people may argue that we've done enough, that it's convincing enough. Um, but one reason for actually going through all of the stages, for example, another stage might be instead of a fraction divided by a whole number, a whole number divided by a fraction. One reason for really going through all of these stages is that oftentimes when students, when, when children are exposed to a certain idea, then they really focus in on what that very, very, very particular problem looks like. So they might have a thought process that is something like the following. Well, if it looks like a fraction divided by a whole number, this is the rule. But maybe they won't connect the same rule as being valid if the problem looks different. And a whole number divided by a fraction is going to look different than a fraction divided by a whole number. So that might be a reason for actually continuing this process with a whole number divided by a fraction and also a fraction divided by a fraction. So that's what we'll do here. Again, we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We have a whole number divided by a fraction. We wanna illustrate that in this case, the correct way of doing this is again, multiplying by the reciprocal. So what we do is we come up with a word problem that we illustrate a whole number divided by a fraction and we show that this method, as we just give a real world solution to this problem, that the correct arithmetic that comes out in the wash is multiplying by the reciprocal. So an example here <clears throat> might be four divided by one third. That's a whole number divided by a fraction. Our goal, again, is not necessarily just to get, obtain the correct answer. Our goal instead is to illustrate or to show that four divided by one third is exactly the same as, in this case, four times three, because three is the reciprocal of one third. That's what we want to show. So, as we did in our previous two examples, we might come up with a problem. Um, <clears throat> so let's say we have four candy bars are split into thirds. How many pieces of it? Now, this type of problem is actually a little bit different than the problems we've had before. The problems we've had before in our whole number divided by whole number case and our fraction divided by whole number case were cases of partitive division. This is actually a measurement division question, right? And it's important for students to be able to recognize as they read this question before you actually solve the problem, what arithmetic is needed to solve this problem. This is a problem that illustrates four divided by one third with measurement division. So this is measurement division.
for 4 divided by 1 third. Again, remember our discussion of measurement division. One, uh, an interpretive question that is asked with measurement division in this case would be how many thirds make 4? And that's exactly what's being asked, right? We have four candy bars, we're splitting them each into thirds. We want to know how many thirds make four. Again, my picture will go on the other board. <clears throat> this is a very easy picture to draw and interpret. The real world application of this is quite clear. Candy bars are actually easy to draw too, just draw bars. So if we have our four candy bars, and we split them each into thirds, it is quite clear, again, the 12 is not the important part of this process. The important part of this process is realizing that on the surface, the way this question was phrased, the arithmetic necessary to solve the problem was four divided by one third, because the question really asked, how many thirds make four? That's a measurement interpretation for four divided by a third. But very clearly, in actually solving this problem, we see that the arithmetic that can be used to solve this problem is 4 times 3. So in this example, it's quite clear that 4 divided by third, sorry, 4 divided by 1 third is equivalent to 4 times 3. Again, that's what we want to get across. So we have yet more evidence that the correct way to divide fractions is by multiplying by the reciprocal. Because again, in the whole number divided by whole number case, in the fraction divided by whole number case, and in the whole number divided by fraction case, in each case, the correct method for solving the problem was to multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. Now, we have one more case left, which is the case of fraction divided by fraction. And this case is a little bit trickier to illustrate. <clears throat> We're going to approach it in the same way that we've approached We'll approach it in the same way we approached the other cases, in that first we're just going to start with an example of a problem that's fraction divided by fraction. So maybe we will use the problem uh, 1 and 3 fourths divided by 2 thirds. This is a fraction divided by a fraction. Our goal, again, is to not necessarily get the right answer. Of course, that's always nice, but really what we want to illustrate is that this problem can be solved by multiplying 1 and 3 fourths by 3 halves. Oops. Our goal is to show that 1 and 3 quarters divided by 2 thirds is equal to 1 and 3 quarters times 3 halves. That's our goal. We're going to proceed as we've been doing. We want to come up with a word problem that represents 1 and 3 quarters divided by 2 thirds. And then we want to illustrate that the solution of that problem is actually found by taking 1 and 3 quarters and multiplied by 3 halves. Okay? Now, here's the tricky part of this. In the last three examples, it was pretty easy to come up with word problems that illustrated a whole number divided by a whole number, a fraction divided by a whole number, and a whole number divided by a fraction, just using partitive and measurement interpretations. <clears throat> That's a little trickier when we have a fraction divided by fraction, as we saw in a previous clip that discussed interpretations of division. Okay? Now, one way of thinking about, or the way that we can interpret partitive division in this case, if we choose to use partitive division, is to think of 1 and 3 quarters divided by 2 thirds can be interpreted as 1 and 3 quarters is 2 thirds of what? Again, if you recall our discussion of uh, partitive division from before, when we translated it to uh, a, a problem involving division of fractions, this is how this is the language we use to interpret a question like one and three quarters divided by two thirds from a partitive perspective. Perspective, but this is something that would definitely need, need to be reinforced to students because they probably hadn't seen it in a while. Okay? But the good news is is that once we have this interpretation it's a little bit easier to come up with word problems that reflect a situation like this. So our example could be something like um, a jug containing one and three-fourths gallons of water is two-thirds full. 
how much water would the jug hold when filled to capacity? Now, if you just start by stating a problem like this, it is not very clear that the correct arithmetic needed to solve this problem is 1 and 3 quarters divided by 2 thirds. It takes quite a bit of thought, actually, to get to that point. Um, if we kind of flip it around like we did here, though, and kind of start with a partitive division perspective and remind students that 1 and 3 quarters divided by 2 thirds is interpreted as 1 and 3 quarters is 2 thirds of what? then perhaps the students themselves could come up with an example of a word problem that corresponds to 1 and 3 quarters divided by 2 thirds. Either way, once we see a problem like this, we can interpret this problem as 1 and 3 quarters is 2 thirds of what? So on the surface, we understand that the, the arithmetic necessary to solve this problem is in fact 1 and 3 quarters divided by 2 thirds. What we still left to do, of course, is to illustrate that actually solving this problem requires multiplying 1 and 3 quarters by 3 halves. And actually, we are going to use our model drawing technique to illustrate this. And in, another, in a later clip, we will um, go into more detail about how to use model drawing to solve word problems involving fractions. But we can give a good introduction here. And this is also a good point to mention that um, with arithmetic with whole numbers, uh, we have a very kind of clear sequence, uh, teaching sequence that we follow. We first discuss the operations, uh, the concepts of the operations, the models and interpretations, and then we learn how to compute, so we learn the algorithms, and then after we've learned how to compute, we start solving word problems. With fraction division, however, word problems are integral, they, they are kind of learned at the same time or, or discussed at the same time as the actual uh, operation of division of fractions. You've seen in every stage that we've gone through, we have motivated each stage with a, with a word problem. And that's actually necessary at this stage as well. Okay, so if we wanted to draw a bar diagram that illustrates, in this case, let me rewrite the interpretive question. One and three quarters is two thirds of what? That's what's being asked here. So if we wanted to draw a bar diagram that, re re that reflects this question, then the what is going to be the question mark. The entire bar is going to be the question mark. And we need to know something about 2 thirds of the entire bar. Okay? That implies that we are going to cut the bar into three pieces, and we are going to shade two of them. Now the significance of the 1 and 3 quarters is that the 1 and 3 quarters is 2 thirds of the bar, right? So 1 and 3 quarters is equivalent to these two shaded pieces. Okay. Again, if you remember our discussion of the model drawing technique, we have a complete diagram. Okay? All of the information in the problem is reflected on this diagram. Okay? If you further remember from our discussion of model drawing that our next step in the process is a unit sentence. We want to interpret this diagram in the context of what we call a unit sentence. So we need to match a certain number of units in this problem to a certain quantity. That's actually pretty easy in fraction problems because by the very nature of fractions, all the pieces are a unit. They're all the same size. So in this case, it's pretty clear that two units is equivalent to one and three quarters. That will be our unit sentence. And I'm going to, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to convert one and three quarters to seven. So if two units is 7 fourths, we need to figure out what three units is equal to, right? That's going to give us the answer to this question. So if two units is 7 fourths, we remember from partitive division way back when that if two units is 7 fourths, one unit is equal to 7 fourths divided by 2. Now at this stage, we already should know how to solve this problem, right? We have already talked about a fraction divided by a whole number, then multiplying by the reciprocal is the correct way to solve this problem. So 7 fourths divided by 2, we can carry out that operation. 7 fourths times 1 half. And I'm not going to focus on, I mean, I, I know we're always tempted to go all the way and find the answer. But remember, the answer is not necessarily what we're really interested in right now. What we're interested in is showing that 1 and 3 quarters divided by 2 thirds is equivalent to 1 and 3 quarters times 3 halves. So I'm going to leave this as 7 fourths times a half. 
Now, if we look at our bar diagram, we, we see that we need to know what three units is equal to. Well, again, we just refer back to our models of, in this case, multiplication. If one unit is seven fourths times a half, then three units is that quantity multiplied by three. So we see that three units, and the answer to the question is seven fourths times a half times three. Now, if we think about multiplying a number by a half and then turning around and multiplying a number by three, well, we know from our fraction multiplication discussion that one half multiplied by three is three halves. So seven fourths multiplied by one half multiplied by three is exactly the same as seven fourths times three halves. This is what we wanted to get across, right? We know that we started with the problem seven fourths divided by two thirds. And in the process of solving the problem, we see that the solution of this problem is the arithmetic 7 fourths multiplied by 3 halves. And this is it. In every case, we had four cases, a whole number divided by a whole number, a fraction divided by a whole number, a whole number divided by a fraction, and a fraction divided by a fraction. In each case, we stated a word problem that, in which it was clear what the correct operation was. And in the solution of that problem, we noticed that in each case, multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor was the correct way of solving the problem. And we hope that this is enough evidence for our students to recognize that this is always the correct way to solve a fraction division problem. Okay. Um, however, this last stage of fraction divided by a fraction is a bit tricky. It really heavily relies on knowledge of partitive division. Okay. For that reason, um, there's an alternate method of fraction division that is sometimes taught called the common denominator method, and that will be the content of the next book.